Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to your next lesson in exponents and thirds. In this lesson, we're going to be basically simplifying thirds. And what we're going to be doing is using the combination of all the rules that we have learned so far of our thirds and our rational exponents. So let's look at a few examples. It says, write the following in the simplest third form. And this is basically going to be what we have to do for each of these examples. So if we look at this, we see that it's root 50. And I don't know about you, but I don't know right off the bat what is root, the square root of 50. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our prime factors. Remember what we did? We did prime factors. So 50, the smallest prime number that can go into 50 is definitely 2. So we can go 2 goes into 50 and we're left with 25. The smallest prime number that goes easily into 25 is 5. And then 5 goes into 25 5 times, and obviously 5 goes into 5 once. So that means that we can rewrite this as 2 times 5 times 5. Or we could write this as the square root of 2 times the square root of 5 squared. Now we can break this up because of the rules, so it becomes the square root of 2 times the square root of 5 squared. Now the square root of 5 squared is just going to be 5, so that becomes 5 root 2. Okay, and that is the simplest third form. Remember they said the simplest third form, so they expected us to have a third. Now again, I'm choosing to just use the positive values for the square root since we have started with a positive value here, yeah, but th that's fine. Or if you want to be pedantic, you could write minus 5 root 2. 2 there. Okay, now again grade 11s, if you get used to doing these questions and you see immediately it becomes 2 times by 5 squared and you can break it up like that, that's great. Otherwise, take it nice and slowly and you will get to the right answer. Let's look at the next example. Now the reason I included this example is because there's a fatal error that most students make. And the fatal error is they add these numbers and then find the square root. So let me explain to you what you'd be doing. If I told you the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2, if I gave you that, and you went, oh, but that's easy, that's the square root of 4, which is then equal to 2 or minus 2. But it's not, because if you haul out your calculator and you go square root 2, you get 1.41 and a whole bunch of numbers. So it's 1.41. And that plus 1.41 is equal to 2.82, which does not equal the square root of 4. So please understand that you cannot bring these under the same square root or cube root or whatever third it is if there's a plus or a minus between them, because then there are two different terms. But if there's a times or divide, you can. Okay, so again, what we're going to do is we're going to look at prime factors. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is look for 147. So 147, um, and the smallest number obviously is an odd number, so I'm going to try 3. 3 goes into 14, 4 times remainder 2, so that is 49. And then it's quite nice because we know for a fact that the prime number that goes in 49 is 7. 7 goes in 7 times and then 7 divided by 7 is 1. So we could write this as 3 times 7 squared plus, let's look at 108. Oopsie, 108. So I'm going to divide that by 2 and that's going to give me 54 and I'm going to divide that by 2 again and 54 divided by 2 is again going to give me 27 and then the smallest prime number that goes into that is 3 and 3 goes into that okay so then that becomes 3 I mean sorry it becomes 9 and 3 goes into 9 3 times so you end up with that so do you agree that that becomes 2 squared times by 3, times by 3, times by 3. And there's a reason I'm doing this, because I want you to notice something. So do you agree we can break this up into the square root of 3 times this by the square root of 7 squared plus the square root of 2 squared times by the square root of 3 times 3 times 3. 
Okay, so let's make this nice. The square root of 7 squared is just 7 times by root 3 plus the square root of 2 squared is 2 times by. Now do you realize that I could write this as 3 squared times by 3? Ah, so then I could break this up even further and I can go 7 times root 3 plus 2 times root 3 squared times root 3. Okay, so we've got 7 times root 3 plus 2 the square root of 3 squared is just 3 times root 3. Okay, so then we've got 7 root 3 plus 2 times 3 is 6 root 3 and 7 and 6 is 13 root 3. Right, again grade 11s, you will notice that I was a bit pedantic and I took my time in breaking these up. But if you immediately see that, oh look, that's a 2 squared and that's a 3 squared and that leaves you with a 3, you could have immediately gone to maybe a combination of that line and that line and then got there much faster. But it doesn't matter again as long as you get there in the end. And as you practice these things, you'll see them faster and then you can skip some of the steps. Right, let's do another example. Okay, so this time we've got the square root of 18 divided by the square root of 72, all divided by the square root of 8. Now remember what we said, if we've got to divide our times, we actually can bring these all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up and I'm going to go square root of 18 divided by the square root of 72, all divided by the square root of 8. Okay. So then if we do that, do you agree that what does that mean? That means we can go square root of 18 over 72. The square root of 18 over 72 divided by the square root of 8. So the square root of 18 is what can go into both 18 and 72. Well, just a second, let's just see if 18 is divisible, it is. So this becomes the square root, 18 goes into 72 four times. It's the square root of four, I mean a quarter, divided by the square root of eight. Okay, so now I'm going to bring those over each other. So it becomes the square root of a quarter divided by eight. And remember, what do you do when you divide? You tip and times. So that is the same as the square root of a quarter times by 8 over 1 and then we can cross multiply and we cancel and that becomes a 2 I mean yes so this just becomes square root of 2 okay so that scary looking thing there can be broken down if you just do baby steps again okay let's try another example oh okay so now, again, I'm wanting to see, I've got a square root 5 here, I've got root 45 here, and I've got root 8 here. And my first instinct is to try and see if I can break any of these up into something with a square root of 5 in them. Because then when I multiply a square root 5 times square root 5, I'm going to get a 5 and it's a nice number. So let's see what we can do with this. Let's prime factorize 45. So we go 45. And what goes into 45? 5 definitely. 5 goes into 45 9 times. 3 goes into 9 3 times. And 3 goes into 3 once. So therefore I could write root 5 could be rewritten as root 5 times, there we go, 3 squared plus 2. And let's see what we can do with 80. So 80, if we factorize it, the smallest prime number can go into 80 is 2, and that gives you 40. And again, 2 gives you 20. And again, 2 gives you 10. And again, 2 gives you 5. And then obviously, 5 gives you 1. So do you see that we've got 2 squared, another 2 squared, and then a 5? So this becomes 2 times... And I'm going to break it up nice and slowly first. 2 squared, 2 squared times by root 5. And yes, you could have gone that as 2 to the power of 4. I'm very happy for you to do that. But since we've got this as a square root, I'm just sticking with 2 squares, okay? All over. So, square root of 5. Now, this can be broken up into square root 5 times square root 3 squared plus 2 times the square root of 2 squared times the square root of 2 squared times root 
5. So then you've got root 5 bracket. The square root of 3 squared is just 3. So we've got 3 square root 5 plus 2 times the square root of 2 squared is just 2. The square root of 2 squared is just 2 times root 5 which becomes root 5, 3 root 5, plus 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 root 5. So 3 plus 8 is 11. So what do we have? We have root 5 times by 8 times root 5. And root 5 times root 5 is just 5. So 5 times 8 is 40. Okay. So grade 11s, you can see that if you just take baby steps and something that can look really weird can actually be very easy. Now, if you look at this example, again, we've got a minus. So what does that mean? It means we cannot bring these over each other. So what we're going to have to do is prime factorize each of these, find the prime factors of each of these, and then see what we can cancel. So let's do 98. So 98. Okay, the smallest prime number that can go into 98 is 2, 2 goes into 9 4 times remainder 1, 2 goes into 18 9 times, that's beautiful because we know that 7 goes into 49 7 times and 7 goes into 7 once, right. Let's do 8, 8 is easy because we know that 8 is 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8, okay, and let's do 50. 50, the smallest number that can go into 50, that's a prime number, is 5. Oh, no, it's 2, actually. The smallest number that can go into 50 is 25. Then, two, what's the smallest number? 5. 5 goes into 25, 5 times, and then 5 goes into 5 once. By the way, grade 11s, if you make a mistake that I just did, and I went, oh, look, I just know that 50 goes in, the smallest number is 5. Let's say I made a mistake like that. You go 5 into 50, it gives you 10. Smallest number 2 into 10 gives you 5, 5 goes into 5 leaves you with 1. Do you see that over here? I've got 2 and then 2 times 5 times 5. And here I've got 5 times 2 times 5. So it actually doesn't matter which order you go in, but it does give you a better answer if you start with the smallest prime factors first. So what do we have? We have that root 98 can be written as a square root of 2 times 7 squared minus root 8 can be written as the square root of 2 times by the square root of 2 squared all over root 50 can be written as 2 root 2 times 5 squared so if we break that up we got root 2 times root 7 squared minus root 2 times 2 all over root 2 times 5. And now I want you to be careful because a lot of kids make a silly mistake. What they do is they go cancel, cancel, and you're left with this root here. You cannot cancel if there is a minus or plus, neither the numerator or denominator, if you've got, because that means you've got two terms at the top and one at the bottom, and you cannot cancel if you have got multiple terms in either the numerator or denominator. So what we're going to do is look at this and we go, oh, look, we have a common factor here of root 2, root 2. So therefore, we've got root 2 square root of 7 squared is just 7 minus 2 over root 2 times 5 and we can go cancel cancel now because we've got only one term because that multiplication there makes this one term but it becomes even easier because 7 minus 2 is 5 and 5 divided by 5 is 1 okay Let's look at something a little bit more complicated. So again, we've got 98x to the 4 over 128x to the 4, I mean plus 128x to the 4. Okay, so now again, what's nice about this is because this is x to the 4 and this is a square root, we know that we're going to end up with x squareds, but we have to play with the numbers again. And I'm going to cheat and look at the previous example. And do you see that 98 became 2 times by 7 squared? So that makes my life a little bit easier. We know that this is going to be 2 times 7 squared x to the 4 
plus I don't know this one so now we're going to have to find the prime factors of 128 and since it's an even number the smallest number that can go in is 2 that gives you 64 so again we put 2 in and we end up with 32 and we put 2 in and we end up with 16 and 2 and that gives you 8 she is a pattern yeah and 2 gives you 4 and then 2 gives you 2 and then finally 2 gives you 1 wow so it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 really 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay so this is 2 to the 7 x to the 4 okay so this can be broken up as root 2 times root 7 squared okay times root x to the 4 plus root 2 to the 7 times root x to the 4 okay so therefore we've got the root 2 stays agreed square root of 7 squared is just 7 the square root of x to the 4 is the same as x to the 4 all to the half I'll show you about that now plus now this is a bit of a tricky thing but if we realize that this can be rewritten as 2 to the 6 times by 2 okay because remember what is this you add the exponents when you're multiplying times by x to the 4 to the half okay so what have we got now we've got root 2 times by 7 this cancels with that you left with x squared plus this can be broken up into 2 to the power of 6 times by root 2 and that's now x squared as well because this cancels with that and then we've got root 2, 7, x squared, plus, now this here, okay, if you haven't already twigged on to the fact that what we are really doing is halving this when we are doing the, the square root of this, let me show you how it works. You've got 2 to the 6 to the half times root 2, x squared. So again, I know I'm being tedious but I would rather be tedious and you guys understand what I'm doing. So this here becomes 2 to the power of 6 times a half. A half of 6 is 3. So it's 2 to the 3 root 2 x squared. And 2 to the 3 is 8 and 8 and 7 is 15. So we end up with 15 root 2 x squared. And that is your final answer. <gasps> very long-winded okay you could have done a lot of these steps in one go I just took it nice and slowly so that you guys could understand because obviously I'm not there to teach you and go over it a second time so make sure you understand all the baby steps right grade 11s you need to go and practice lots of examples of these thirds and simplifying them and applying all your laws and then go do the assessment at the end of the section have a lovely day mm -hmm.